This is New Cab News with Lauren Poland. Good evening and thanks for joining us. Well, guys, why is pink the hottest color of the day today? Oh. Anyone enlighten us? Anti-bullying? Anti-bullying day, and see? I get a star. Cool, <laughs> cool and pink. <laughs> no, We're all stepping in to help out. For, it's all uh, for a good cause, too. Yeah, yeah and uh, the region definitely stepped up. We'll have a couple more stories just a bit in the cast here. But first off, Moses, devastating night for the Bobcats. Yeesh. Uh, I don't even know if there are words to describe it. Just more like grunts <laughs> and it, moans. Took it on uh, the chin. But yes, Boom. It, was, uh, it was a bit of a tough night uh, for the Bobcats. We'll have plenty of that uh, coming up in sports. And Gerard, not too bad this morning. It didn't take me any time at all to really scrape off my window. It warmed oh. up a bit. <laughs> yeah, I did some scraping myself too. Yeah, but we, we got some snow on the way as we've been hinting all week long. It looks like tomorrow is the day starting at midnight thereabouts. But let's relive the events <laughs> of today firstly because we saw a high temperature today of minus seven we're still at it from just about three o'clock and that wind chill though it's not been our friend it started off at minus 23 in the morning and it's up to minus 11 at the moment with the winds out of the east at 11. we're going to see a buildup of cloud cover along the uh, evening as the evening progresses and then on the after midnight's going before morning we're expecting some snow across the region but the details of that we'll give you a little later on in the cast Word of a nationwide drug shortage is reaching more and more residents, and it's starting to stir up concern as to what exactly it means for patients. Elise Cox has more on how it will affect people here in our region. Um, what, is, what if there was no medication and you had to give birth? What would you do? Winona Moreland is a doula and assists in the birthing process. She has seen an increase of women being induced during pregnancy over the years. There's a very high rate of inductions um, and interventions. So if you get induced, which is one kind of drug, um, often, not always, it will lead um, to harder labor and so you will end up getting an epidural, which is another type of drug. A process which wasn't a concern two weeks ago until the drug company Sandoz announced an anticipated shortage. It had to do with some remediation that they needed to do at their plant in Quebec and so because there would be a disruption in the production of the injectable drugs we could anticipate uh, a disruption in the supply of those types of drugs. The drugs include anesthesia, antibiotics, pain management and anti-nausea medications mostly in the injectable form. The goal that we have right now is to reduce wastage um, in the drugs that we do have on board. Um, we're organized to manage uh, the inventory. Um, every week we will be getting an allotment of drugs, although we anticipate it may be less than what we typically order. And with the shortage, Prairie Health North Region is working in conjunction with other communities to manage the problem through teleconferences three times a week. At those meetings, we alert one another to what our um, impending shortages might be, what we are short of, and at some, um, in some instances, it's possible to do a redistribution. The shortage is a rare occurrence, but may have women thinking twice about medication alternatives during birth. It's just rethinking the way, you know, how you think about going into birth. A lot of giving birth is is what you're thinking and what's in your head, and so. Um, you know, hire a doula, go to childbirth class, really educate yourself on how to manage labor and how to get through But labor. through management and monitoring, residents shouldn't be concerned. No, I don't think it's something that um, the community should be alarmed about, um, but they do need to know that there's a, there is a, a situation that, is, that it does exist that we're dealing with and uh, that we're doing everything that we can to manage. That situation. Only elective procedures are expected to be affected by the shortage. Elise Cox, Newcap News. The Prairie North Health Region has announced it will be opening an after hours medical clinic in the border city. Local area residents will finally be able to access non emergency medical care without having a family doctor. Carrie McCullough has more. Prairie North Health Region has announced that as of April, Lloyd Minster and area residents will have an after-hours walk-in clinic, something the area has been in dire need of. We're developing the after-hours clinic um, to try and respond to the number of um, Lloydminster residents who don't have a family physician 
uh, who are currently coming to the emergency department to receive basic access to a physician. The clinic will be operated with local physicians who will be working overtime to try to meet the area's demand for basic medical care in a reasonable time span. But the physicians in our community um, who are you know well aware of the concerns and are equally as frustrated as everybody else by the inability to see people um, in a timely way. So they've gotten together and said we will man this after hours clinic after their regular day in their clinics. The opening of the clinic should help decrease the wait times at the emergency unit. Patients attending the clinic must require non-emergency care as there are limits to what the clinic will provide. The clinic is meant to be um, a response to some basic medical care, so there will not be any casting or suturing done at the clinic, nor will there be um, narcotic refills done. Carrie McCullough, NewCap News. The final touches have been completed at the New Robins Learning Centre at the Royal Alexandra Hospital in Edmonton, thanks to an artist from St. Wahlberg. Susan Velder brought to life sculptures of the couple the facility is named after. It will serve as a way to honour the generosity of Bill and Mary Jo Robbins and will be displayed inside the Robbins Pavilion. The work was unveiled today during the official opening of the centre. Premier Brad Wall is leaving for London today in hopes of recruiting new investors. Wall will start with a two-day conference in the UK before heading to Dublin for a labour recruitment mission. Employment Minister Rob Norris and 27 Saskatchewan employers are also making the trip to Ireland. They're trying to fill just under 300 jobs available immediately for Irish workers. The city is opening the doors of communication for residents to voice their opinions and soon they'll have a direct line to the mayor. Mayor Mulligan is starting a new initiative called Moment with the Mayor where residents can make appointments to discuss burning questions they have about their city. I had Jaw with Jeff sessions and they were excellent. I have my blogs and social media, but not everybody's comfortable in those forums. So I wanted to create another opportunity for the public, those people that say, I've been thinking about this, I've been thinking about that. I want to give them an opportunity to connect with the mayor if they want to. The concept isn't a new one. Many cities have similar programs put in place, and Mayor Mulligan thought it was time to include the border city. Only good can come of it. And so I said, why wouldn't I adopt it and see if I could turn it into something good for Lloyd Minster and residents. The program is expected to include 8 to 10 appointments with residents once a month on Fridays. Kayla joins us on the desk now with a quick peek on what's in store for around the region tonight. I know you and I took part in Freedom to Read Week, so that'll be part of it. What else do we have in store? Definitely, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> and coming up at 7.30 tonight, we're going to meet some very special, very incredible local ladies at the Border City's very first Inspiring Women's Conference. Um, as you mentioned, it's Freedom to Read Week right now, and Kids Cotty Elementary School invited us down to share some of their favorite books with them. And then the grade 8 class at H. Hardcastle School in Edam is also uh, there in the running to win the trip of a lifetime. And I'll tell you how we can help them get there. And of course, Anti-Bullying Day or Pink Shirt Day in Canada. And I go to Vermillion to talk to folks where the entire town there is getting involved and taking a stand. Looks great. I'm looking forward to it. What time is it tonight? 7.30 tonight. Great. Be sure to tune in. We'll be back with more right after this.